All right, so I think it's time to start. Uh, welcome to my presentation. Uh, in last AppSec in London, I, I wanted to show you that um, pen testing iOS applications without jailbreak is possible. And in this year, I wanted to change the sites and show you how to build and hack modern iOS applications. So my name is Wojciech Regua, and I am a senior IT security consultant uh, at Securing. I'm mostly focused on iOS security and Apple product research. Mm. If you are interested in uh, this uh, topic, you can visit my blog. So the link is on the slide. And some of you may uh, know me from uh, OWASP security knowledge framework that I contributed to. All right, so I introduced myself. Now, now I want to know something about you. So security division and uh, builders, hands up. All right. And programmers, hands up, okay. And iOS developers, if any. All right, so there are iOS developers, it's cool. All right, so uh, we do not have to time uh, to speak about everything in 30 minutes. So I'll cover selected vulnerabilities that I found during conducting penetration tests. Um, the extended version of this presentation will be available on my Twitter, so <clears throat> if you wish to, to see the full version, you can uh, check it on my Twitter. Uh, all right, so the agenda. At first, uh, we are going to talk about iOS platform myths and the reality, so we will be a myth busters. Uh, then we'll go through selected problems and solutions for, for this uh, kind of bugs and um, myths. Uh, then I will be presenting you the new Apple WWDC features that may help uh, improving your application security. Uh, in the fourth uh, point, uh, my new library, iOS Security Suite, but I won't spoil it at this moment. And at the end, as a summarize, I give you short and long-term things to implement in your iOS applications code. So uh, the part one, uh, platform myths and uh, reality. And this section, I wanted to show you that uh, we cannot rely on Apple platform as a 100% secure. So the first myth uh, that their uh, Apple's review is 100% reliable. And as you can see on the slide, um, guys from Guardian Mobile Firewall uh, was in were inspecting uh, a malicious application with a malicious activity. Uh, and they find out that this application uh, had a need bypass for Apple's review. And as you can see, uh, there is a method called iscupertino. And as we all know, Apple tests and does the review in Cupertino. So if the application was run there, the, you know, the malicious activity were hidden from them. So they didn't find it. So as you can see, <coughs> Uh, some Apple's review bypass happen in the wild. Uh, the myth too, uh, there is no jailbreak for modern iOS versions. And no, it's again not true. We have uncovered jailbreak that is uh, even open source. You can look into the details of their code on GitHub. So even iOS uh, 12, as you can see, is covered, some of this version, of course. And the myth free, no jailbreak means no reversing applications. Uh, whenever you try to download the IPA, the application package from App Store, uh, it's encrypted uh, using Apple DRM. So in <coughs> If you, if, you, if you want to inspect what's inside, uh, you need to have, uh, or in the past, you need to have uh, 
physical device, the jailbroken physical device, because you had to install the application and uh, dump the, the decrypted version, right? And things had changed because now uh, we have a tool called Corellium, and Corellium is a full virtualization of iOS device. So it's very interesting because now the process of dumping iOS applications uh, will will look look like this. You just you just visit their site, register, pay for the license, and then you create a new device. So it may be, for example, iPhone six. You press uh, OK, OK, and you, you just tick the button whether uh, this, you want this device to be jailbroken. And then, as shown on the screenshot, you have an SSH connection. So you don't need uh, a physical device anymore if you want to uh, dump the, the decrypted versions of your applications. It's pretty cool. So. We're going to part two, the secure development, and before uh, starting developing a modern iOS application or just an iOS application, uh, we have to think about the architecture and choose the programming language that we want to use. So in iOS, the situation is very simple uh, because we have Swift and Objective-C. And Objective-C is only let's say a wrapper on C because whenever you try to compile objective C codes it's at first uh, trans it, the code is translated to pure C and then compiled so the vulnerabilities that you know from C will also exist in objective C uh, Swift is the modern uh, Apple language uh, to, to develop the applications so uh, in Swift, for example, uh, if you meet integer overflow in your application, it will cause a runtime error. So no vulnerabilities like that. Uh, you, in Swift, you do not have a direct memory uh, access. Of course, uh, you can access directly the memory, but the methods will be prefixed by unsafe strings like on the example shown to the slide, unsafe pointer, for example, right? And the vulnerabilities like format strings uh, won't exist in Swift because uh, we have, you know, like in every modern uh, programming language, string interpolation, right? <clears throat> All right. And when developing iOS applications in Swift, uh, there are a few myths that I wanted to bust. Uh, the first one is that Swift auto-obfuscates itself. It's not true, guys. Uh, I have I had a client that uh, needed to be compliant with mobile application security verification standard, the OS one, and in the uh, category eight, uh, in the resiliency requirements, there is a check called obfuscation. And uh, my client claimed that uh, they do not have uh, do anything with it because Swift auto-obfuscates itself. And I wanted to officially bust, bust, bust this myth. There is no obfuscation. There is a mechanism called name mangling that you probably may know from, for example, programming in C++. So, as an example, uh, we have a test class with one instance variable constructor and two methods. The functionality is just, it's just a simple clock. It every one second will print uh, incremented number by one, right? And we, when we compile it um, and use nm on the binary, you can see this whole weird strings. Uh, these are the symbols of this binary. And as you can see, they can be reversed or translated to, to the <coughs> human readable uh, ones. So at first, you, you can see that underscore dollar indicates that it's a Swift symbol. Then you have length of module name like this. It's, it's just, it's, it, it can be reversed, right? Uh, Apple even provided an automated tool to do this. So if you pass the, the previous grab, uh, to XC run Swift the mangle, you will see uh, the symbols in human readable version, right? All right. And another myth 
uh, Swift methods cannot be dynamically changed. Uh, and no, it's not true. Uh, you ca we can use Frida. Uh, if you don't know what Frida is, it's just a uh, dynamic instrumentation toolkit for uh, developers. So all we need to do is just hook the Swift symbol. It's, it's as simple as that. So example of Frida code that uh, we will be using in the demo. So <clears throat> we hook this symbol and whenever it returns a value we, inter we will intercept this and uh, change the value to lead, right? So it's now live demo time. All right. So uh, at first, I'll open this binary, and as you can see, it's just a regular clock. And now, <clears throat> with these uh, parameters, we'll open Frida with the script that I showed you before. And as you can see, the number now is always lit, right? So we change the code execution flow, and uh, we change the return value. <clears throat> OK. So takeaways from this section, uh, Swift protects your application against binary vulnerabilities, the typical ones, and enforces deliberate usage of insecure methods like showed before unsafe pointer. Uh, there is no obfuscation if you want to make your application to be uh, reverse engineered harder. Uh, you can use, for example, Swift Shield that is free, open source, and works well. All right, so data storage, the next category. Uh, and when talking about the data storage, we have to consider the data that shouldn't be on your devices. Uh, you know, and this can be API keys, like Firebase private key. I, so that a few times in the wild, uh, SSH keys, cloud credentials, or even test accounts that work on production uh, environment as well, right? Uh, and when we know which data shouldn't be stored on device, there are there are different type of data, the sensitive type of data that should be stored on device, like for example session tokens, right? That should be stored. And the places that, that this kind of data shouldn't be stored are info lists, user defaults, uh, regular files, or this sensitive data maybe into maybe even hard coded into binary. Especially, I find very t a lot of times uh, when conducting penetration tests, the cloud credentials hard coded into the. The, ex the executable file, right? And when we are talking about the data from this category that shouldn't be on the device anytime, you shouldn't store it, you shouldn't store it in the kitchen, right? The kitchen is secure uh, mechanism to store data, but if some data shouldn't be on the device, it shouldn't be stored even in kitchen, right? Okay, so. Uh, the seed user, famous IS uh, security researcher, um, shared his research uh, where he shows um, the different types of spyware. And as you can see, there is a lot of spyware on iOS that, as a technique, use iCloud backup. So when we are developing a <coughs> iOS application and we need to store some data in files, we have to know which the, the, which of this data, which types of this data will be backed up into cloud, right? So uh, these are directories that are backed up. So for example, documents, uh, library application support, library preferences, and any other directory in library uh, without caches. And of course, temporary directory won't be uh, backed up into iCloud. Okay, and the WWDC feature uh, uh, that I wanted to show you is credential provider extension. Uh, so now you can use iCloud Keychain and your password managers 
also in your native application. That's really cool. But if you want to, your application to be optimized to work with uh, these extensions, uh, it's a good practice to add UI text content type to your text inputs. So the password managers will, will be better know which input they should autofill. Okay, and the architect uh, and the takeaways from uh, data storage are always check if any sensitive data is stored in your APA. Uh, for sensitive data stored in Keychain that you don't want to be saved in iCloud, uh, use this weird string, ksec attribute accessible when, with this device only suffix, so they won't be backed up to iCloud. Uh, if you need to store some other sensitive data in regular files, uh, you may consider the UI key data protection API. And of course, the latest, the, the, the last takeaway may be uh, optimizing your app with credential provider with adding this uh, UI uh, text type, right? So now cryptography, <clears throat> the vulnerabilities that we find in this uh, MAS files section. Uh, are, for example, insecure token generation. And I'm going to show you that on Bear example. Bear is an alternative to Evernote. It's just about noting your, <coughs> your thoughts. So, Beer had a functionality both on macOS and uh, iOS that via URL schemes allowed to uh, retrieve a private note from uh, from this, from from birth, from from your, your installed uh, instance of this application, and <clears throat> it's pretty sensitive, right? To ret ret retrieve sensitive notes. So, Bear developers decided to uh, authorize this operation with uh, user user token. So, I wanted to show and, and investigate how this token is generated. So, I opened Hooper and. <clears throat> loaded it into it, this is a pseudocode, I rewrote it to Objective-C version. And without reading this code, you can see here, we create a new date, we use MD5, some bit shuffling, and here we go, here we have a token, right? So uh, it's, it's, it can be easily brute force. So I did the same and I wrote the full exploit and I retrieved the private notes from Bear. If you are interested uh, in details of how I wrote this exploit, you can read it on my blog. So I'll give you a few seconds to take a photo. Okay, I think everyone took the photo. Uh, so, automatic string password is a feature of last WWDC. So, the mentioned before autofill now can create uh, natively uh, passwords connected to your domain and apply a specific uh, password policy with, um, with providing such string. So, you just type required upper and the policy you want to apply on the passwords. And takeaways for developers from uh, cryptography are please do not create your homemade ciphers since, since it's very hard to do it securely. And treat your encryption algorithm as a public because your application, as shown before, can be easily reversed. even. Even if you restrict uh, the iOS version to the latest one, you can use Corellium and just decrypt your application and, and know uh, how your secret algorithms were made. And if you need to deal with crypto cryptography and AES or RSA, now you can use uh, SecKey Create Encrypted Data, uh, and it's native mechanism in Swift, so you can uh, use natively both symmetric and asymmetric cryptography. And you can now enforce your password policy using a native mechanism without using any other third party libraries. So now we go to network communication <coughs> and the selected vulnerabilities here. So 
avoid HTTP. It's an encrypted channel, we all know that. I don't think I have to explain this on this kind of conference that you shouldn't be using HTTP. Use HTTPS instead. And from iOS 9, Apple uh, introduced uh, App Transport Security, uh, which is a mechanism that by default will disallow the the HTTP uh, unencrypted connections. So developers uh, in practice uh, usually disable this mechanism and it's really not a good practice. Apple knew why they need to implement such mechanisms to protect your application so please try not to uh, turn it off. And if you use HTTPS, uh, you should make sure always if your certificate is trusted. And <clears throat> not checking if the certificate is trusted is a really common case when developers implement certificate pinning and when sometimes they stop using certificate pinning the mechanism that uh, will not check the, the validity of the certificate is still in the application. So, for example, Twitter had a similar bug, they paid uh, for it over uh, $2,000. So as you can see, Twitter iOS fails to validate server certificate and sends out token without checking if the certificate was, was right. Okay, and the next category uh, that is platform interaction. So when talking about uh, platform interaction, uh, I mean inter-application communication because Every application in iOS that you will install from the App Store is sandboxed, right? Uh, so <clears throat> in iOS, we have XPC, Mac messages, URL schemes, AirDrop, and Clipboard. But please do not use Clipboard as an inter-application communication mechanism. Uh, the Clipboard can be easily uh, intercepted and modified. We all know that, but I really uh, found such bugs in, uh, in pen tests. So in iOS, uh, we should use uh, these two kinds of mechanism. So URL schemes, uh, the most important thing here uh, is checking the sender. Because in most cases, we can whitelist the applications that will be communicating to us, right? So. It's just about whitelist and checking the sender. And the bugs from the, uh, <clears throat> from the real world, uh, <clears throat> for example, grab both on Android and iOS version via this uh, URL schemes, uh, <clears throat> had a problem with information disclosure. And as you can see, they paid over uh, $7,000 for it. Again, Twitter. Uh, iOS application can establish FaceTime calls without user permission. Maybe a little bit less bounty, but, but still a neat bug. And the takeaways from here are uh, check if a message comes from the expected sender list. So why always try to whitelist the senders? I don't need to probably mention that uh, the parameters that are passed should be validated by you. And <clears throat> the third tip here is if the message that you retrieve from URL schemes is passed directly to the web view, please check it twice and, valid, valid, and, and check what the web view has permission to, because there were a lot of bugs with it. Uh, and the next section, code quality. So the three main points are easy here. Try not to use deprecated APIs. Uh, libraries that you use in your iOS application also may have vulnerabilities. And if you use uh, packet managers like CocoaPods or Cartage, please do not use fixed versions there. I know it's very hard, but there were a lot of bugs with it. As an example, AF networking in this version uh, allowed to uh, perform a man-in-the-middle attack because it failed to, uh, to, to verify the, certi the SSL certificate. So, as you can see, uh, if you have hard-coded uh, via, for example, CocoaPods, this AF networking with this version, you are still vulnerable. And during uh, conducting penetration tests, I really commonly see the applications that have 
such old versions like this IF networking. So try not to hard code your, the fixed versions. And <clears throat> Apple in the last WWDC deprecated the UI, the UI web view uh, class, and they were right. Uh, because uh, by default, UI, UI web view allowed to access your local files via this file handler. Uh, and by the way, uh, WebKit web view also allows to retrieve your local files from the application container, but you, it's, it's not uh, by default. You have to turn on the specific flag. So, and what's the problem with it? If attacker was able to exploit a cross-site scripting vulnerability, uh, the attacker was also able to steal your files. And now, some examples uh, from, uh, from Apple uh, applications. So, as you can see, I found similar bug uh, in dictionary, in macOS dictionary. It's just a simple application that will translate uh, words from one language to another. But the, f but the interesting thing was that they at first used UI web view and you could uh, insert your own uh, <clears throat> dictionary to the dictionary application. So I uh, created a malicious entry, and as you can see, the code is very simple. It's just using AJAX. Uh, it retrieves the etc password and sends it to my server. And the demo time, I show, I'll show you how it worked. So on the right, dictionary application, on the left, terminal. I open netcat with listen parameter. And now I press the malicious dictionary, try to search for something, and boom, etc password is, was sent directly to my server. <coughs> uh, there was also a similar problem with help viewer, but I don't have time to explain it to you if you are interested come talk me, to me after the presentation. And <clears throat> Lucky Hart from Google Project Zero uh, found this too, so kudos for him. And an example from non-Apple uh, applications, Yahoo iOS uh, version had a similar problem and <clears throat> attacker was able to, as you can see, uh, retrieve full cookies from the applications, and Yahoo paid for it over $3,000. Okay, so now the latest category that I wanted to uh, show you is uh, resiliency requirements. So uh, in this section, we are going to talk about anti-tampering, and anti-tampering is a <clears throat> kind of additional security layer that you may be interested to implement it to your application. And this is especially for those who just don't want to be uh, the core tampered with or consider malware as a risk because usually malware will, will, will at first jailbreak, jailbreak your phone and then uh, do some malicious activities. And there are, of course, developers that are just need to be compliant with a mobile application security verification standard and just, you know, <clears throat> Ch check the uh, check the column uh, in anti-tampering. So uh, I prepared a special library for it, uh, iOS Security Suite. Uh, that's now in uh, it pre-release stage. Uh, it's it's uh, available on GitHub, but uh, the features that I wanted to say that it's in pure Swift, so no legacy Objective code uh, in your applications. Uh, it will detect uh, the new jailbreaks with uh, new indicators. Uh, it will check for attached debuggers or even uh, will find tampering tools like Frida, Needle, Passion Fruit and any other common uh, tools. And also it will check if your application was run under the emulator. So if you are interested, uh, there is a QR code to the GitHub page. <coughs> I released uh, it on MIT license, so feel free to use it for free. All right, a few seconds to take a photo. Okay. And uh, 
and the summary. So the most common vulnerabilities that we find in modern OS applications are sensitive data without any protection that may be backed up. Uh, the API keys, cloud credentials, working on production test accounts, uh, the network issues like <clears throat> HTTP connections, uh, poorly protected URL schemes, or fixed library version with commonly known vulnerabilities. And the recommendations for developers, in short term, uh, you should uh, try to uh, optimize your application to work properly with password managers and autofill. And if you are developing a high-risk application, uh, you may consider applying additional anti-tampering uh, checks in your app. And in long term, uh, if you used uh, UI web view that I showed you before with these vulnerabilities, um, <clears throat> you may need to change to WebKit web view. Uh, from the last WWDC, you now can use native uh, password policy in your applications, so no more third party uh, <clears throat> pol policy enforcers. And if your application is written in Objective C, it's now a good time to start thinking and considering migrating in it to Swift. I know it can be painful, but now Swift is, I can say it's stable, so, <clears throat> so it's a good time to think about it. All right, so basic on our experience in most applications that we test, vulnerabilities are exist. And in my opinion, and it's only my opinion, most of the vulnerabilities can be fixed by security aware developers. But <clears throat> we're only humans, right? And even security aware developers may miss something. So if you develop a high risk application, I would recommend you uh, <clears throat> perform a penetration tests. Security is very important here. So for Everyone uh, who leaves the business, uh, their business card, I will send uh, this presentation directly to their email. And for now, it's all. Thank you for your attention. I'll take a photo with you. It's my tradition. All right. <laughs> if you have any questions, feel free to ask. <clears throat>